Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the new Windows 10 Snip and Sketch tool. So this tool seems to be a tool that's going to be replacing the original snipping tool. So if I go down to the search menu, I've recently had the latest version of Windows 10 update so you can see the search has changed here a bit, the start menu has changed a little bit as well. But in this set here I'm going to type in Snip. So I'm going to search for Snip and you can see the old snipping tool here. If I click on that, which is what I did today, you can see snipping tool is moving and it's moving to this new tool called Snip and Sketch. So let's try this tool out. The way to find this particular tool is to go to the search and type in Snip again and you'll see the Snip and Sketch here. You can just right click on it and then pin it to your start menu. And when you see it on your start menu, you can just drag and drop a copy to your desktop. And I'm only doing that just so I've got ease of access. Now to demo this software, I'm gonna open up my web browser and I'm gonna to go to my website and I'm on my portfolio, right? Where all my work is. Example of my web stuff and my graphic design, all that sort of stuff I do. And um, a couple of things to note is if I wanted to do a screen capture from here, there's a couple of ways to do that using that tool. Now, it's not perfect, but I'll explain the advantages and disadvantages, right? So really I'm gonna minimize this and open up this tool. So I've got the tool open here and you can, if you go ahead and click on new now and you want it to screen capture something on that website, it won't work. So what you need to do is actually have the website open first and then go to the snipping tool and uh, then click new here. So when I click new, I can see it will basically hide that snipping tool and then give you the options up here. Now if that web browser wasn't open in the background or behind this original tool, it will just show my desktop. And there's no way to really display this web browser until you close or use the snipping tool. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm not convinced it's the best way to do this, but I'll show you a couple of other ways that, that this can be done as well. So for now, let's just um, look at these tools at the top. So you've got a rectangular snip, you've got freeform, you've got window snip, and then you've got full screen. So let's use the box tool, the rectangular, and let's just say I wanted to send a message to my developers or my designer and I'll just highlight this section of the website and I'll let go of the mouse. That will bring that section directly into the snipping tool software, the snip and sketch. And you can use this on your tablet or you can use this on your desktop computer or your laptop. If you've got a touch device, you can actually use the, the, this uh, touch writing. So you can actually draw onto the surface here and draw on, onto this content. But for me, um, you know, if I was going to use this in my own business or a real life scenario, what I'll be doing is using sort of like the highlighter tool and really the, um, the highlighter tool here and the pen tool. So an example of this ballpoint, if I click on it once, it will show me all these different variations of color and I can increase or decrease the size of the, the pen itself um, here by doing that. So just click and you can change the color. So let's stick with red and let's just say that this project here was discontinued or I needed to update it or change or it's been there for a very long time, I wanna switch it to something else. Uh, obviously I can do that myself, but if I'm very busy or I'm going out to meetings, I could just send this graphic to my designer and say, take out this pro project uh, marked in red and switch it out for a different project, All right? But normally I'll put a comment on a few different things because something simple like that, I can just email it straight to my developer. But if you're sending this something to a client, then it might make more sense to highlight these things. So there is actually a pencil tool here We'll come back to that in a moment. Let's go to the highlight tool. So I'm gonna click on the highlight tool and then click on it one more time and I'll get a selection of colors. There's only a handful of colors in here. It would have been nice if there was red in here, but I assume for some, for some reason, whatever, there's no red color. One question, why there just isn't a red color? So let's look at the blue color and you, you've all seen highlighters before. You can change the thickness and stuff like this and then you can highlight a piece of content on the website. So let's say, um, uh, something like this, you can like use the highlight tool. Um, it's kind of like an overlay highlighter. So whatever's in the background, if it's got yellow, it's gonna really the yellow and the blue combine together make green, right? So it's kind of like that. So you can see like the blue color here on the white, it will just be blue. And then if I start highlighting this stuff here, it will change the, the highlight, it will change color depending on what's in the background. Now obviously I made a bit of a mess here. So we can use the eraser tool. Let's click on the eraser tool and you just drag your mouse over the content that you want to erase. Nice and simple, right? Let's click back on this array, uh, this um, highlight tool and select the orange color, and I'm gonna highlight this section here like this. And I might send an email to my developer and saying, uh, I don't know, 
disable this project, put a different one in there, and then move this project to the project archive, for example, right? You could be sending that message to your client. Maybe this is what you're telling them to do, for example. Um, there's another tool here, which is the ruler tool. So when I click on that, I can drag it down and up and down like this. And I might move the ruler tool to this sort of position here. And then I can click on the ballpoint pen tool and I can make that a bit thinner. And maybe we'll change its color. Let's click on it and maybe we'll make it to like a purple color. And then I can draw a straight line straight across this text. And I might tell someone responsive web design, change that to mobile friendly website design. It means more to people and people don't really know what responsive is, but they do know what mobile website design is or mobile friendly it makes more sense to them. Um, and maybe uh, this client has changed their brand color, right? Or changed their brand some way. Maybe their logo has changed. So maybe we can highlight that here and just saying replace this logo with the client's new logo and attach it. And I'll send that to my developer. If we click on this, there is a pro, pro, uh, protractor tool. I'm not convinced. I'm not really found a real use for this. Um, I've tried to resize it to make it smaller. So maybe I can draw a circle around something. Uh, maybe if you're designing something like a little sketch, because it does say sketch, right? It does say it is a sketch tool. Uh, it's a snipping tool to so screen capture, but it's also a sketching tool. But, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's the most advanced tool, but maybe that's all you need is a ruler and a protractor. So you can draw circles. You could do maybe some like really, really basic sort of floor plan scans or uh, maybe a really basic sort of mock up for some work or something. So let's use this tool. What I'll do is I'll click here, maybe change its color to orange, and then I can draw sort of angled shapes, right, like this. Um, why you would need that. I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced why you need this protractor. I, I can't really see myself using it that much. If I could reduce its size, then I could draw a circle around something. That will kind of make more sense to me, but I've found no way to resize this. So if anyone out there can find a way to resize this tool, uh, I'll be grateful to let, let me know. Maybe put um, a comment in the YouTube or Facebook description, uh, commenting, and then tell me how that's done, but I couldn't find a way. So let's click on that one more time and click on protractor. That will hide it. We can click on the eraser tool and draw over this because I don't really want to see that. Now that we've got this information here, there's a couple of things we can do with it. Number one, we can save it. So we can click save, go to my desktop and save this here. And we can also press control C to copy. So we can copy it using control C. We can minimize this and minimize this. And then you'll see um, here, you'll see the actual screen capture that we've done. But remember, we control C to copy. So you can go ahead and open up your email and just paste it straight into your email and then you can just write a few comments at the top and send that to your developers or send that to your client you can just cut and paste straight into an email which i think is quite good i'm going to close that because i don't really want to do that but let's go back to the snipping tool you can click here and you can select open with then you can open it with like photoshop illustrator you can open it with gimp let's open it with adobe fireworks this is a bit like a cut down version of uh, photoshop think of it that way and then you can have it directly in here and then you've got more powerful drawing tools on here you can highlight things a bit more clearly so you can click on the box tool for example give that a bit of a sort of green color here you can set the transparency and then you can draw over certain things here like this and highlight them more easier yeah you can change the whips and stuff like that in this software but this that's not kind of the point the point is that you can actually bring that graphic in here and do more edits to it if you wanted to but that tool should really be sufficed in order to highlight things and, and cross things out. I don't think you need to really bring it into graphic software. If you're going to do that, you might as well just screen capture and bring it straight in here anyway. The whole idea is that you don't need those tools, uh, Photoshop and so forth, to do these basic edits. That's kind of the logic, right? Now, if you, mem if you remember, if, um, if I open up my web browser again, um, if I minimize this and click New, you'll see that I see my desktop background which is why I said you had to have that tool or the window, the, the browser open behind this tool in order to screen capture it. And there is another way to do that. You can close this and you'll be back at the tool. You click on this drop down and say snip in three seconds. So if I click that, that gives me enough time to open my web browser. And now the tool will appear after three seconds, All right? So I guess uh, the people at Microsoft thought about that. How can someone get to a certain point on their page or whatever they want to do? Uh, and then still have this tool appear over the top. So let's um, let's close this. Let's move to a different section. Let's go to let's say uh, let's go to logo designs, right? 
So we're looking at these logos here and I'm going to minimize this and I'll select snip in three seconds and then click back on the browser and then you see the snipping tool I'm going to use the freeform snipping tool and maybe I just want to draw around this particular logo and then let go and now I've got a copy of that logo and then I can just send that to my client and say here's a logo I've done for another doctor does this logo look uh, is this something that you like and do you want me to make something that looks like this but different enough so it's not the same and that will give me a give them a bit of an idea of what my thoughts are, right? So I can easily send this. I can just press Control C, copy, paste it into a um, a uh, email and just send send it straight away. One thing I'm curious of, I'm a bit curious, if I click save here, save this to my desktop, let's close this and minimize. Uh, okay, so it shows it as a transparent PNG. So you can see um, it's got some transparent edges on here. So if I were to drag that into another bit of software, it wouldn't just be a white box. It actually has transparency applied to the image, which is quite interesting, actually. I didn't think it would do that, but it did. If I open up this window snipping tool again, uh, let's close this window. On the drop down, you've got 10 seconds as well. So if you want to go and do certain things, certain actions, and get your page prepared, um, you can use that tool as well for 10 seconds. But I think three seconds should be enough, as long as you know what you're going to be snipping. So you can click here, go to your browser, move to another point. And then uh, you can use the, um, let's see the window snip, right? So that would actually snip the, the current window only. So if I were to click, uh, I guess hit enter. Or let, yeah, let's hit, let's see window snip. Or we have to left click here. Then that will give me a screen capture of the whole web browser page rather than just a certain part of it. So you can just snip the whole window. Um, that makes more sense, I guess. If we click on... Let's minimize this. Let's close this one. Uh, let's close the browser. If I were to open up my Explorer here, as an example, um, if I wanted to snip just this window here, like the content in here, rather than the whole background, the whole window, I could open here and click uh, Snip Now. Actually, I've got the, this other thing in the background. Let's minimize that. Let's click um, New. And then if I can see that it's highlighting white of this only this window if I click up here then it's highlighting the whole um, background including this image but if I click here it will only give me that particular uh, window as a snip right so that's pretty much about it I can't really explain much more to you than that um, I do actually use this tool sometimes because I get people on YouTube asking me questions like how do I do this in blender or what settings do I select in Photoshop or what settings do I select in um, uh, different applications. I get quite a few questions when I make my tutorials on YouTube and then rather than me trying to write this long uh, Explanation, I'll just write a few little comments and then put a graphic there and just say look if you want to I don't know um, Show thumbnails for example, then you need to go to uh, Let's just reduce the size of this. I'll mark it probably red, right? So here's a good example Maybe I'll say like I'll highlight this here and say click on this button down here right here to show thumbnails for images, for example, yeah? Or list view and so forth. So some people may not necessarily ask me that particular question on YouTube, but they'll ask me other questions, something a bit more technical, maybe in uh, Blender or in Photoshop or, or GIMP software or, you know, OpenOffice or all of these. You go to my channel, you can see how many different software applications I've been through. So I get a lot of questions. Anyway, let's close this down. I hope you find that tutorial useful. I find this new tool quite useful. It's, it just allows me to do things a lot quicker. I don't want to have to open up Photoshop just to capture something or screen capture it and then edit it in Photoshop. This allows me to do it a lot, lot quicker. And the quicker you get things done, the quicker you can move on to your next task. So I hope you find this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.